Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, first impressions. How do you make a good one? How do you screw it up? We're going to dive into first impressions, those first five seconds, one minute, five minutes, and figure out the recipe for success with first impressions. So keep listening. Welcome to the Ask Women podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Carney, along with your other host, Marnie Kinris. And today we have a a dude. I'm very professional, as we know. I have a dude who has created a new app for dating online. And so he's going to talk to us all about it. And his name is Jordan, um, but I'm not going to say his last name because you'll think he's related to someone famous. <laughs> hey, Jordan. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hey, how are you guys doing today? We're good. Well, so we all know that the world Weird. needs another dating app, right? Right. Yes. So, <laughs> well, that was my first thought. Yeah. <laughs> was like, that's, you know, saying like, I invented a new hamburger stand, not in like an offensive way, but it's just like another McDonald's right. kind of thing or it's another fast food place. What is different about Well, actually, before we go to the what's also, different, I want to I want to yeah. hear like a bit of okay. backstory from Jordan. I want to definitely want to hear what's different about this app, but I, I want to hear his story of how this came name, to be. Yeah. Okay, sure, the name. Sure, definitely. To touch on your you know hamburger thing, like why well, is Five Guys better than McDonald's? You know, it's it's the same thing. It's a burger, but there's just no there's no real comparison. I agree. There. Did you just say Five Guys is better than McDonald's? Oh my God, yes. Oh my God, okay. That's another podcast episode, but no, you're wrong. Okay, I'm definitely, (laughs) I'm going to definitely have to be on that one. I have uh, some very strong Yeah, I No, are you really saying that McDonald's is better? Uh, Yes, oh my God. What? What? McDonald's is so gross good in every way. I don't want a real, no, when I go out for a fast food burger, I don't want a real burger. I want a fast food burger. I hear you. So Five Guys is too much like, yeah, like, like my dad cooked it on the grill. Right. No, no, no. I want a shitty, gross, delicious like hamburger. So I like put five guys. Lifeless patty. Yeah. I get it. Maybe after a <laughs> night of drinking. Maybe after drinking for a night. Yeah, you want the McDonald's. But like if you want like something delicious and just yeah. greasy, just full of, you know, just terribleness, just five guys yeah. is the way to go. <laughs> All right. Anyway, on to dating apps. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the the app is called First Impressions. I actually came up with it in 2014. I just graduated from college. Um, I was actually a Division I basketball player. So, you know, meeting people and females at that, you know, wasn't wasn't that hard. But then you get out of college and now it's, you know, you're just with your guys and you're working. And now it's how do we meet somebody in the bar, right? So that's not really the best situation to meet somebody is too loud or you go to the, you know, go to a lounge or something like that. You just got, you know, just a bunch of noise. You can't really hear anybody. You're trying to yell into somebody's ear, you know, but not seem creepy at the same time. It's just too much going on. There's too much, you know, in the background. So I had this idea after talking to my brother one night about a dating gap and I called it first impressions and it's been called first impressions since then. But essentially what it is, is it's an organic dating app. So like no GMOs? Is that what you're saying? Or what? Pretty much no GMOs, <laughs> right? So each, <laughs> yeah, so each, each feature and each thing on this app is specifically mimicking a human interaction. One thing that you'll always hear and I've, I've always heard from people is that I want to meet somebody the old-fashioned way. I want to meet somebody in person organically. And if you think about what that really means, right? You you, you go out, maybe you're out at the at a at a restaurant. You see a, a nice young lady sitting across the bar, or a nice young guy, you know, whatever you're whatever you're into. You, maybe you're in an earshot of them. You're you're getting a sense of them. That that first impression. You decide, hey, I think this person is great. You know, I might be interested in, in them. Let me go talk to them a little bit. You start to make small talk. That's your second impression. You find out what they are, what they're about, you know, what they're interested in. And if you, you really like them, you, you try to ask for a phone number. And that's the third impression. That's communication stage. That's exactly what we are. So it's a three-step process. Our three-step process, you know, gives people more vetting power. You know, Tinder will, and Bumble will, you know, boast about making a billion matches a day. But really, it's all mindless swiping because everybody's just playing the odds, trying to, you know, hope somebody matches with them so they can... You know, shoot their shot with their, you know, their, uh, their, their text break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Exactly. The text bravery. So with first impressions, we start off with a five second video and you have to take this five second video from the app. There's nothing to be uploaded. And with this five second video, you're getting a novel of information about somebody more than you would get from a still image, right? You're seeing how they sound, you know, getting that IRL capture, you're seeing how they sound in real life, seeing how they move, getting an energy, getting a sense of energy about them. And that's kind of where, you know, that whole love at first sight comes into comes into play. Okay. Interesting. And so then how is this, this like more closely mimicking real life compared to just looking at a picture? Like I'd love to hear, yeah, but like the the pros and cons, like what were the, what do you see as the cons of Tinder? Does it, does it have you making poor selections? Is it not really the way that you select in real life? Like I'd love to hear you. It's not. It's not. And, you know, it's, it's poor selections and it's, you know, that especially if you've, you know, you've been drinking and you're on Tinder, you're, you're probably right. making a lot of bad decisions and you, you know, might wake up the next morning with a, with a you mattress. You don't have to be drunk on Tinder to make bad decisions. It's just, it's just like, there's no other choice on Tinder. That's true. That is true. Yeah. You could also be at home by yourself, just, you know, sitting there in your fields, just lonely and just, you know, swiping on anything and all of yeah. a sudden. Here's, here's the thing is the loneliness swiping is it's almost like beer goggles because exactly. if you're alone on a Friday, you will swipe right on whoever. And then all of a sudden, two days later, you see that you match and you're like, <laughs> I didn't swipe right on that person. And like, hey, they did. Oh my God. It was when I was lonely. It was. So, yeah. it, it was. That's the problem, right? So you, you know, you, you, you all of a sudden you have matches for people you normally want to match with. You know, not your type, you're not attracted to them. And then, you know, they're actively pursuing you and you're just like, Hey, I'm not interested, right. you know, yeah, that's, the problem. That. That's, the, that's the problem with Tinder. With ours, we, with the, with the three-step vetting process, you have, you know, two opportunities before you get to that point where you can say, hey, I'm not actually interested in this person. You okay, know? so let me wrap my head around this a little bit. And I have a small head, so it won't take long. Okay. There's cool. the five-second intro video. So basically, yeah. it's you kind of selling yourself and talking rather than just having a simple photo. Five, in five seconds is really just enough time for you to say, hi, my name is, to introduce yourself, just like you would in person. You're just okay. making that first impression. Okay. And then the second impression is, is what? The second impression is going to be still images and a bio that okay. you're trying to corroborate with that first impression. So we guarantee, so we can guarantee no catfishing. You know, a lot of people are, you know, and catfishing is, you know, the big thing with these dating apps, just the fraud and people just being, you know, somebody different. I've been catfished. I can't tell you how many times I've been catfished using Tinder, you know. There's, you know, the, 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 uh, pay, the the pay for talk girls or the, uh, you know, the guys that end up, you know, just stealing some Instagram model's picture and trying to, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, there's so much of it. I feel so bad for you guys. Ex- exactly. Well, women have it too. But like, there's a yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, women definitely have it, and women, and it's and it's worse for women because you know there's real. If you actually take the opportunity to go meet somebody, if you're brave enough to do that, and there's 91 percent of women actually don't do that on Tinder. But if you're brave enough to go meet somebody, you're really you know putting yourself out there, and if it's not the person that you know you are expecting it to be, you can be in real danger. Actually, there's actually there's a statistic, 25% of rapists in the uh, in yearly find their victims off Tinder and Bumble. Yeah, okay. And, if, and you're, really? if you were a rapist in like the 70s, you'd be like, these kids have it so easy today. I oh, had to exactly. go out and actually like, <laughs> stalk people. Like stand and lurk. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, so this is... Lurk in a corner. Yeah. Exactly. This is so much right. easier. Exactly. Scary. Yeah. Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. That actually is a crazy statistic. Okay. So the, like basically what I'm hearing is that you're painting a picture that there are scary things that are happening online right now, which is making people less inclined to participate and less inclined to, you know, actually get off their butt and go meet them in person because there's scary things that are happening. Exactly. And so the app that you guys have created is with this video, you're showing that you are potentially a real person or as real as you can be. How much more human interaction through video is there on this app? after you guys match like do you do you send videos back and forth to each other instead of chatting so once you get to that communication portion then it's this totally up to you right so now you've taken the time to really consider whether or not you actually want to talk to this person so we're going for qu- for quality matches rather than quantity right 
in the five second video, you know, that's about as much time as it takes for somebody to actually look at a picture on Tinder and swipe through it. So if you're looking at a, at a video of somebody for five seconds and hearing how they sound, you actually are going to have more information about them and you're going to have a feeling that maybe you actually could have some interest. In. Then you get your mind work in and then there's that whole, Oh, well maybe I could see myself dating this person and you actually have to think about it. Right. So once you get to the still image portion with the second, with the, with the second impression, now you can look at images that they've uploaded, see a bio and see if there's, if you, if you actually have some compatibility, maybe there's, you know, some hobbies that you're interested in. Now they're, now you're adding that to, you know, that original first impression. And by the time you get to that third impression stage, you actually are more invested. So. Okay. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I really like the idea of the video because of how much editing and face tuning people do to their pictures Oh yeah, there's no there's no Photoshop, and that's the thing with Tinder, right? You you get the you get the Instagram models, or you get the people who Photoshop, and you know it's you know it's supposed to be like some good good looking person, and then like you know you're getting, you're supposed to be getting like you know uh, Edward Cullen, and then it ends up being like Meatloaf or something like that, right? You know <laughs> just like that, that that whole just straight up stereotypical catfish, just the forty year old dude who has nothing to do and is just trying to prey on on people. Me like looks that. like what I do. How can I get dragged into this? Yeah. yeah. Poor guy. yeah. Well, He's not a great looking man though. Well, then that's a, that's a good segue for us because I think I think that, not Meatloaf, but first impressions so, overall. No disrespect, Meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> not, Rocky Horror Picture Show, still one of my favorite films. But, okay. <laughs> so first impressions, okay? So like you have five seconds to make a great first impression, which is, is the same thing for real life in most situations. Sometimes exactly. I get a little bit longer than that. So because you are now the expert on first impressions, how do guys mm-hmm. make a good first impression? What are like the three top things they have to be aware of when when making an impression on a woman to create attraction or to show that they are somebody of value? What what would be your tips for this? I would say the first one would be to have a good video uh, of yourself in and centered on your screen, right? So you want to make sure that the person that you are hoping that you can match with can actually see you and can really get that sense of you to invest their emotions into it. Secondly, you got to be confident. So when you're, you know, introducing yourself, having the confidence, you know, in there, in your tone and to say, hi, this is who I am. Like women love that. Women, women love confidence. I mean, anybody really loves confidence. Men love confidence in women as well. And, uh, I think the, the third thing, we want you to be yourself and that's our slogan, right? So you gotta have confidence, but what we're, what I mean, ultimately what we're doing, uh, you know, is we're trying to create a community of people with these first impressions to really sell themselves and to sell their personalities and exactly who they are, not somebody who they think the, you know, social media or ads for, you know, these other dating apps are, are trying to portray them to be. Quick question about the background. I, I can see someone like me completely overanalyzing the video aesthetic itself. So sure. where would you say for people to actually tape this video? Like in your room, in your kitchen, outside? I would honestly say to take it wherever you feel comfortable in that moment, because it's supposed to be an IRL capture, right? So when you're meeting somebody in person for the first time, you can't, you know, take them to a private room and be like, Hey, introduce yourself to me. Like, that's not going to be realistic. If there's a, if there's a space, it would be super (laughs) creepy. I'm sorry. I I made that voice. I was just Mm -hmm. trying to sell it for, you know, just an effect, but you're not going to be out and really be concerned too much about the background noise as long as your microphone can pick you up and you'll have the opportunity to preview your videos before you you know you know set them for your first impression but as long as the mic can pick you up can pick up your you know your voice and then i mean your environment really plays a role into who you are you know if you're somebody who lives in the city and that's about you know that's what your life is about then you know have the city in the background if you're walking down the street and you you look at yourself in the in, in the window and you see, you're like oh hey i feel confident right now let me take a great first impression you can do that okay mm, well so like like how that. do we transfer this over to having a broader discussion about you know putting your best foot forward in 5 seconds and making a great first impression because as important as you know having a great video shot is important for the app what about in real life like what what things do you need in real life to make a good first impression whether you're at a bar or a coffee shop or you're even at the office how how do you transfer that great first impression into the real world like how would you show that you're confident how do you just be yourself in under five seconds how do people 
how do people show that? And it's a tough question. So I'm not I trying to have like. I, I, and I'm going. And you know what? I think the I think the real answer to it is just being honest with yourself. Yeah. Well, let me. Well, let me. You know, yeah. Let me ask gonna, you because you were a basketball true. player, so I'm sure you got lots of girls. Yep. You had lots of confidence. You got out of college, and then you discovered there were other ways to meet girls. You went to bars. Maybe it wasn't so authentic. You, you went online. I'm sure you got swiped a lot. And then you were like, okay, well, there has to be something else. But like at a certain at a certain point, were you ever struggling? And if you were, how, how did, how did you find that confidence within you? And then how do you express that to women? Yeah. So there actually was a time when I was struggling. I, uh, you know, when I first started really exploring the idea of, of my own app, you know, I started using the tenders and the bumbles and I tried the eHarmonies and match and the how about we and coffee, oh me, coffee, <laughs> meat bagel and the, you know, 10,000 others that are out there. Okay. Cupid Zeus. And really there's, there, there's no real, you know, formula with the still image. Right? right. So all you're really trying to do is have the best image of yourself that's as possible. But when you're meeting somebody in real life, there's other things about you that, you know, people are going to find attractive, you know, whether it's your voice, whether it's your, your energy, you know, there, there's things about yourself that you can re- actually capture in a, in a video aside from, you know, how you smell and taste that, you know, that might be a, a good <laughs> thing that we can't do that right. at the moment. Well, for you, what did bad. you realize were your things? So obviously, you know, you were going on all these apps because you weren't finding somebody that was right for you, but like, what did you figure out that your package was the best way to present yourself? So for, and in person as well. Yeah. So for me, I'm all uh, my energy and my presence really is something that has people gravitating towards me. I, you know, I'm, I was definitely best. I'm a, I'm a pretty big guy. And when mm-hmm. I, you know, when I walk in the room and people see me, like there's this, this, this sense of people just, you know, taking notice to me, you know, added to the fact that, you know, I do work out, I do, you know, make sure that I feel confident about myself, you know, inside so I can project that stuff outside. So, you know, even for me, you know, when I talk to people and one of the things that, you know, really drove me to creating this app was, you know, talking to people, especially my friends who actually struggled with meeting you know women or having confidence to do that i had to tell them like hey like you may not look like me or you may not you know sound like me or whatever the case may be but there are things about you that are great and there's somebody you know out there that you know will find these things to be attractive we just have to find out who it is so if we have to go up to you know every you know woman in here and introduce yourself and you know talk to them and make sure you know find out if there's interest in chemistry between you then that's what we're going to do I love it. How did you figure out for these other people who maybe didn't look like you or didn't have the height that you have or the background that you have? How how did you help them figure out the things for them to focus on? Because I think a lot of people spend a lot of time saying, I'm not tall enough. I don't yeah. have enough hair. I'm too heavy. So how, how do you get people to reframe their thinking or your friends to reframe their mm-hmm. thinking so that they can highlight the wonderful things about them and then enhance those things? Like how how did you help them pinpoint those things that they could use. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, if for me, I take a personal interest in everybody that I associate myself with. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to call you a friend, then I am actually going to listen to you. I'm going to know things about you that, you know, you don't tell other people because we do have developed that friendship and I'm going to know the best things about you. And if you don't see that, then I will tell you about that, you know? So mm-hmm. for me, when I'm, you know, giving people advice, it's I'm taking all those aspects about you that you may, you know, be overlooking if you're, you know, specifically focusing on the physical. And I, you know, I'll highlight for, you know, like, oh, you're smart, you're an amazing person, you know, you, you're very funny. Like, these are the kind of things that people are going to find attractive and, you know, just reassure them. And, you know, if you got to tell, look, my thing is, if you have to tell somebody they're beautiful every day until they believe you, then that's just, that's just what you got to do. And that's what the app's about, you know, it's us creating a, an environment in a community where all we're trying to do is promote, you know, positivity and self and positive self-awareness for people through all of our services. That's why we, you know, we have specific services like the live sessions and, and, and a matchmaking service, you know, different than just these single Avenue apps to help give people different options and outlets to find who they are and what really makes them, you know, the, their best version of themselves. I love that. Well, let's say so some, somebody is smart. Right. And that's sure. what they've got going for them. How do you, how do people use their intelligence 
to be attractive to women. So like a guy, could he go up to a girl in a coffee shop and just be like, Oh, I'm going to do a math equation for you. Like how, like how, how, (laughs) how could that, how could that be used? So I think the easiest way for somebody to really, you know, convey to another person that they're smart when they're, you know, meeting them in the person for the first time is really, you know, just speaking eloquently and just having a great talk track. Like you don't have to say anything over, you know, overly intelligent, like E equals MZ squared. And this is how you, you know, that was gonna be my you, you know but I, I can, I can, uh, you know, calculate pi all you out to the 26th, you right. know, you know, decimal or something like that. Like just having an eloquent, you know, speaking tone and making eye contact, selling nonverbal signals of that you're picking, you know, that, you're, that you're really trying to convey to people. Um, that's definitely something that they'll pick on for, uh, pick up on for intelligence. And then, you know, start getting to your conversations. You can find out what their interest is. And maybe if there's something that you have an you know, idea about, you can, you know, drop maybe a little fun fact in there, you know, just to maybe make them laugh that, hey, you're listening to them and you heard what they said that they're interested in and you, you have knowledge about it. Okay. I love that. All right. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and I'm going to ask Kristen about first impressions. So we will be back shortly. Hey you, this is Marnie and thanks for listening to the Ask Women podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Take a quick moment to give us some feedback on our iTunes page. We'd really love to know what you think of us and also give us five stars just because. All right. We are back. And so Kristen, I'm going to make you talk now. Okay. Unless you've fallen asleep. Um, no, but, <laughs> okay. So you are dating. Are, th- are there like two standout first impressions that you can comment on of people that were not super attractive? Like, I, I, I really want to know what the average guy can do to stand out in those first five seconds, whether it's on video or it's in person or it's at a coffee shop or it's at a bar or it's at a comedy show, whatever it is, like in your opinion, how, how do they do it? And then I'd love some, some examples of of guys that have done Uh, it successfully. I know it's tough. You don't get out of your house. Yeah. Yeah, Well, no, I don't. And you could have asked me like, you know, how to solve the MC squared shit. And I would have probably known a better answer. (laughs) This is so difficult. I'm trying to jump to recent dating situations that I've been in, for examples. The first thing I can think of would be a smile. And I feel like that sounds cheesy, so I don't really want to say it. But I'm picturing this guy that I went out with who I didn't think he was the best looking guy in the world, but he was sitting inside the restaurant before. And before I got in there, I could see him through the glass. Mm -hmm. And so he just kind of had his head turned over, almost like looking toward the glass, waiting for me. And he saw me in the window. And the minute he saw me in the window, he smiled. Mm -hmm. And it struck me. It was like, oh, that was... Because I didn't... We had never met before. And you're looking for that moment of, is this the person that I've been talking to online? And so it was a comfortable smile that didn't have any sort of nerves behind it. And I found it very attractive and very comforting. Okay, I like that. I, I can actually, I can actually picture I that right now because there is a difference. Yeah, yeah. It, so I, it, this is not even close to the same thing, but it is still first impression. So my son is now going to kindergarten, and I have to make all these new friends, and so I'm getting <laughs> a crack at the first impression thing. But I'm noticing that there are some other parents in the school who, you know, I don't have a great first impression of either because. They're a little, I mean, they're nervous, they're tense, their kids are going to kindergarten, they're not really focusing on other parents. But because of that, their body behavior is reflecting that. They're crossing their arms, um, they have a bit of a scowl on their face, and when you, look, like I look over and I say hi to people all the time, they don't really, they're sort of caught off guard and then have like a weird response back. So my first impression of them is not yeah. so great. I think I'm rocking the first impression. <laughs> Because I'm smiling, but um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people think I'm super annoying. No, you do give off a good first impression. I've seen it. I haven't experienced it myself. <laughs> I've just seen you do it with other people. Your first impression with me was terrible. You, no, you have kidding. a very great first phone, first oh, impression phone voice. All right. I'm going to never yeah. see anybody yeah. in person yes, because I'll just use that. Uh, but thank you guys. <laughs> no, but I, I do I do think that like, you know, making note of that, understanding that that people are watching at all times, not to put pressure on yourself, but that... You know, you you can always be making a good first well, impression, even for yourself, just to lighten your mood. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing with the smile. As someone who's cynical and not always smiley, I, 
even I am attracted to the person who smiles. So right. it what it does is it But you makes wouldn't me be if they were smiling the whole time at you. No. If you wouldn't stop smiling, then right. you'd be like, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, you know, you're a freak yeah. or I'm doing a medication. Right. Yeah, like there would be something weird or off. But the minute you make eye contact with someone and that person just instantly goes to a smile, it makes you comfortable because they're comfortable. And mm-hmm. so there's something very attractive and endearing and that will pull you in about that kind of quality about someone. And I've noticed that I never would smile first when I saw people and people wouldn't respond to me very well. And then I started smiling and people's reaction is so different. And it's like I'm instantly accepted or instantly invited into their world. So if you're not the best looking dude in the world, if you smile and make eye contact, you're saying to her, I'm confident. And yeah. that's yeah. attractive I, in itself. I, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, and so, like, I'm just picturing a whole bunch of videos now of guys, like, just smiling. But the, oh, yeah. I think that that would actually really work. So let's go on to the just be yourself. Come be yourself. Of what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah come be so how did, you, how did you figure out who yourself is? Who, who are you? Who is yourself? You know what? That's actually a great question. And, you know, it's something uh, it took me a long time to figure out. Because when uh, it's, uh, just this is a gruesome story, so don't don't get mm-hmm. freaked out. But when Maybe. I was playing, yeah, Come so on, when I was playing me. basketball uh, in college, my junior year before Wait, one the season, note, that is the best way to frame something. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. Like, all I want to do now is listen. I'm like, what's gonna happen? Okay, it's gonna, go it's, on, it's, there's gonna be two stories. So I'm just telling you, it's gonna it's gonna get weird. Okay. So junior year before the season started, I was you know in practice and I had a situation where got injured and actually broke my neck. Ooh. Yeah, I had uh, two of my vertebrae pop out of my pop oh my out, God. and uh, had extensive nerve damage, um, and that took me out for pretty much the entire season. So yeah. I came back and you know got stronger, faced adversity, and then three days before the season was supposed to start, my senior year, my my leg disconnected. <gasps> oh, geez, um, you're like yeah. uh, you're like uh, like a. Like Gumby. Like a, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Gumby or a, a Mr. Potato Head. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Things just kind of <laughs> just, uh, like pop yeah, just, out. Popping out. Just a bad genetic, just bad genetic thing. I'm a big guy. So, right when I was born, right. the head of my femur didn't shape correctly. So, it was a, a rectangle in a ball socket. Mm-hmm. So, for years, my hip had been breaking. And when I was uh, in practice, like, my, I, uh, the muscles connected my leg. I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's crazy. You know. Yeah, so the muscles connecting my uh, my leg and my hip together completely tore apart, and I had to have my whole pelvis reconstructed. So that took me out for two years, dropping basketball stock, and I was sitting in the orthopedic surgeon's office, and this dude who's supposed to give you hope, and you know he's got all the framed jerseys on the wall of athletes that he's saved, and he's sitting there, and he's he asked me, he's like, "Do you still want to play basketball? Because you probably can't." Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, "What?" Wait, okay, so this was after you broke your neck and your leg came out of its socket. You you I know. were so optimistic enough to think, you know what? No, I can't. Exactly. I'm still exactly uh, you're still optimistic because you're not, you know, for oh, twenty one you know. years, twenty years, that's all you know. That's your entire right. identity, that's your life. Yeah, and yeah, no matter no matter what you do, like if they tell you if somebody tells you that you can no longer do what your life is, you're you pretty much die. You're dead. Yeah, you absolutely. no longer exist. Yeah. So I had to find myself. That's it took crazy. me. It took me a while. You know, about probably about a year or two to kind of find myself. I eventually came back. What did and, you do? You know, I went into coaching and I started hanging around some. Uh, I was like twenty two at the time. I started coaching high school, and you know, at that time it was about eight, two years after the injury. So my two year time frame of not being able to do any physical activity came up and, you know, just hanging around these younger guys and them giving me confidence and them looking up to me. I just started to, you know, feel good about myself and then had to go on a journey of self discovery. Like who am I now? If I'm not just going to be this person anymore, just playing basketball, then what, you know, what am I good at? You know, during that time I ended up writing a novel and then I wrote two, uh, two more. And then it just became, all right, this is who I am. I am a creative person. I have more knowledge than I thought I did. And how am I going to apply that to my life so that I can, you know, find fulfillment outside of what I've known, you know, the longest thing I've done up to this point, you know, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm not just saying this because you brought it up, I swear to God. But the minute we started taping, you said something about 
when you got out of college and you didn't really have the label of basketball player anymore and you were dating more so as just like a quote unquote regular person, I wanted to jump in and say, I feel bad for people who had that crutch almost their whole life Mm -hmm. of like, this is what I am and here's what makes me valuable and why women will want to date me. And there's guys out there who have never had that. And I feel bad for the guys who did have it, who all of a sudden are thrown into the like reality of not having that that group or that title to give you validation. Yeah. yeah and so I'm so glad that you brought it up. Yeah. Because so many guys that listen to the show, I'm sure don't have a title. You know, they're not, they didn't play basketball in college. They didn't, they don't have a job on Wall Street where that's like, that's who they are. And so it's really um, intimidating, I think, when they know that there's other men out there that have those titles and have those things behind them to fuel it's their It's so funny. So, okay, so I get I get my... I love what you're saying. So uh, sorry, it's sparking something for me. So I was at the gym today, which I Liar. most days. But I was. I was there. I was working out. I left the class did. early you like usual. Right. <laughs> exactly. See, Jordan talked to me before. <laughs> I went up for half an hour, left the class early. I That's where I get my best ideas. And so I went upstairs and I quickly like wrote down a script that I'm going to send out as a newsletter shortly and then probably make a video about. But it's about like your buzzwords and figuring out your attractive buzzwords for yourself. So yeah. when I was in the class, there's this girl that was in the class that I've been trying to become friends with <laughs> <laughs> who goes to my son's school and like she's slowly warming up to me. She's kind of like you a tough cookie. Which, yeah, I used to like staring at her and just smiling. <laughs> no, I'm like trying different approaches and it's working. Um, and I can tell that she's shy too, even though she has a very confident exterior, like she doesn't give a shit. And so I was leaving the class half an hour early and she goes, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to go do my podcast. And she goes, what? Send it to me. And I, like right away, she like grabbed her phone and wanted my information. And I realized afterwards, like I, I, I'm lucky enough to have certain buzzwords and buzz things that I can say that right away trigger somebody's primal brain to be like, what, what do you do? You coach men on how to attract women. You have a podcast, like you're Canadian. I don't like... <laughs> these, are, these are all things that sort of get people to spin their head around for a second. And I was I was thinking like, everybody can have these things if they just take a moment to think about what the interesting things are in their lives that they like to do, the just be yourself label, and then figuring out like that one sentence on how to frame it, something that's a little bit different than other people or maybe, you know, like some guy might be a truck driver, which is really fascinating. Some person might work at Walmart and like there's some way to express what he does in a more interesting way. I'm just saying like to figure out those few buzzwords that you have that you can sprinkle into a conversation that gets somebody to say like, wait, what are you talking about? I don't have that experience. I'm not doing that in my life. Tell me about it. Yeah. But you know, it's also people don't, can't always find that 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 thing for themselves, right? Sometimes right. we need we need assistance. And uh, for me, even though I wasn't playing basketball anymore, I still had uh, I still had that alpha male presence that a lot of people, you know, found you know uh, attracted or or attracted to. And you know, even during the time when I, you know I retired and I uh, you know stopped playing basketball, I was you know thinking about going into football. You know, people still looked at me as that you know kind of reassurance or that, you know, validation that, Hey, if this person thinks that I'm cool, then maybe I am. Right. So how many guys have that? I mean, it's not acceptable really, you know, socially for guys to really share their feelings with each other or to, you know, be that, that outlet. Right. So if you have, you know, one guy that you think is just the the absolute coolest person in the epitome of, you know, what you're trying to be. And he actually takes time and, you know, is a friend to you and listens to everything that you have to say. That's going to, that's going to go a longer way than uh, people trying to find self-discovery. Like we need help. And, you know, that's that's what these dating apps don't do. They don't give people help. They just put you into a catalog. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like playing guess who, right? Like you just got a picture and you're just like flipping through cards trying to find somebody and you're not doing that. You know, you're just a catalog. You're just a picture in a catalog in, in an index of an infinity people. And you have to hope that by some miracle, the moon's aligned that day. And, you know, one person thought you were attractive enough to have a conversation. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's, that's life. Like you are nothing until exactly. you put yourself out there and become something. So you're just the guy who stares at a girl until you go up and you introduce yourself or you ask her out. And then <laughs> yeah. you're, so it's like, a, 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 I love everything that you're saying. Cause it's like every, everything requires you to 
take a little bit of action to stand out. And I think the things that we discussed on the show are different ways that we can figure out the things about us to help us stand out and make that great first impression. So Jordan, I'd love you to tell the people who are listening to this show about how they can pre-register for this app and be involved in the beta test, unless I'm saying this incorrectly, but like just, you know, be, be involved at the very beginning for first impressions. I think it sounds cool. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So you can go to firstimpressionsdating.com and pre-register there. And if you pre-register, we'll give you a three months uh, free trial of our premium services. Once we hit V1 launch, um, there'll be some really awesome new features that nobody has. Um, we also, I mean, I don't know if I said this before, but we, we a hundred percent guarantee no catfishing. Like there's no joke in that. We can 100% guarantee no catfishing. So, there, is there number, a vetting process for the people who sign up? There is to, not. To so there's some back end proprietary software that um, um, Nick Lamb. I think you guys both mm-hmm. know Nick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Good old Nick. So we're working with Nick. Nick is our cybersecurity guy for this project and slash mentor slash, you know, core team member. So he actually has this program um, that he's already built and he felt like it aligns 100% with what we do and it 100%, again, 100% guarantee no catfishing along with other things like, you know, we have these pretty much what we're, if you think about it, like, you know, men are going to come on the app if women are on the app, right? So we have to make what, 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 what one thing we're trying to do to differentiate, differentiate ourselves is we've made the app safe for women. So we are going to be able to have a global impact on uh, sexual assault crimes because of this software that Nick has put on there. So, you know, everybody, I mean, dating apps are really becoming the main way of meeting people nowadays. Like there's, there's no way around that. And we will have the safest app, you know, and most interesting app out there. So you can go to first impressions, dating.com, uh, first impressions, dating app.com. No. <laughs> yes. First, well, first impression is dating dot com. Uh, I'm sorry, okay. um, and pre register there. Uh, all it takes is your first name, last name, and email, and we will send you a, a confirmation email. And when we go to our V1 launch, then you can uh, go on there and you know use the premium services for three free months. It's about like a twenty dollar value there. Also, follow us at uh, First Impressions app um, on Instagram. And Facebook, and uh, we'll be posting. You know, we, we constantly post about progress and you know features and everything that we have going on with the app. So, you know, we'll give you give uh, listeners and people who pre-register, you know, a heads up on when, what we're looking to do and when we're going to be dropping things okay, so that they cool. are they're ready for that. And uh, cool, yeah, awesome. So, how are you guys? Quick question with the getting people on there because that's I think the biggest hurdle for new apps is having the amount of selection that something like Tinder or Bumble has. What are you guys doing marketing wise? Like are you getting your name out there and Yeah, so we are we are getting our name out there. We are using we're using uh social media to do that. We actually uh have uh Costa Lanis. Um I think you both know who that is. I think uh I think Costa's working with Marnie possibly. So Costa is a marketing guru and he has uh, a great network of, you know, marketing resources that we're actually going to be utilizing for this. So we actually will have the ability to have a global awareness and, you know, reach as many people as possible in the fastest amount of time as possible. So yeah, we're, we're, we're getting out there and hopefully we can get some, uh, some of these followers from this awesome podcast to come join us too. And, uh, you know, just really take this to the next level. Yeah, well, I think it's awesome. And, and I hope it is super successful. It sounds like you have all the right materials to make a an excellent app. I'm sure an Kristen will be on there very shortly. <laughs> I guess you yeah. made a good first impression. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Jordan. Thank um, you both for having me. Yeah, of course. New episodes of the Ask Women podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Sometimes I post it a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later, so don't get pissed. You can go and download individual episodes if you'd like, or you can be awesome and subscribe to our show so that it just automatically is there for you when you want to listen to us. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next week.